Global Development Agenda, EDA Resource Center, and the Election Observation Platform, expressed disappointment and regret over the last minute postponement of the presidential and national assembly elections earlier scheduled for today, Saturday, 16th February, 2019. Despite repeated assurances of preparedness, the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, attributed the postponement to logistics and operational challenges. The details were, however, not explained. Neither was any apology tendered. We also note that these challenges have continued to plague our elections over time and now constitute a threat to the integrity of the electoral system. We cannot continue with a template of poor management of logistic as a reason for postponing elections. Having committed scarce resources to the observation process, the platform and other stakeholders were looking forward to successful elections. To all our esteemed election observers across the country, partners and the media, we appreciate your support and commitment towards TMG and EDA's efforts in making Nigeria a better nation. We, however, hope that INEC will resolve its logistic issues before the newly scheduled date for the elections, as we are Nigerians and friends of Nigeria not to be discouraged in exercising their civic responsibility to elect the leaders of their choice to various political offices. We further urge political parties to rise above partisan consideration and call on their members to refrain from comments and actions that could jeopardize the successful conduct of the elections. We appreciate the enthusiasm and interest that everyone has shown towards the elections, particularly eminent Nigerian leaders who were carefully, carefully picked to as, as assist us in the realization of our mandate to support processes which would contribute to the realization of free, fair, and credible election. TMG and EDA will keep you updated on our next line of action with regards to the election as events unfold. We thank you and God bless Nigeria. Um, gentlemen of the press, we are open to questions and further discussion on the issue. <coughs> My name is Tobo Bubanke from New Telegraph Newspaper. From my experience about election coming and I know by today you have the floor with lots of people on the floor. How do you feel that this process is being cancelled and it's going to be debated around that? So, in terms of court decision, how do you really feel about this now? Even mm -hmm. looking at the fact that even the economy of today has already been paralyzed and these people are just coming out now to resume their So, how do you feel that we will get other events in two weeks in a week time? Well, it, it, it's rather unfortunate. Uh, for example, for TMG, we had actually organized to deploy 4,000 observers across the state. And you can, you can imagine all the plans that we have put in place to deploy people in 36 states plus the FCT. As of yesterday, particularly, people have actually traveled to the hard to reach you know, areas you know, around and across the country. So the cost implication of it is so huge. And I'm sure it's not only about us, it's also about other observers across the country. Uh, uh, and also international observers who had traveled from far and wide, who probably already have a ticket that uh, already has a return date. So it's, the implication is really uh, very terrible. And that's why we are very concerned, because this has happened in 2011, 2015, during the Edo election, now it's happening you know, all over again. So that it does not become a pattern that will jeopardize all the efforts that we are all putting in place you know, to uh, ensure a democratic space that is uh, free and fair and better for the generality of Nigeria. So we are really concerned. It's really a huge cost, but you know, as Nigerians, 
we, we would continue to push because our major goal is to ensure that we achieve, we achieve an election that is acceptable and credible by, by all. Like he said, uh, so the, the entire nation, the nation's economy was shut down in this election to take place. Uh, like you said earlier, the expedition experienced it in 2011, 2015 as well. But it was Nigerians, some Nigerians who probably had lost confidence in the electoral body. What would you like to say to them? Well, the statement has already appealed to all Nigerians not to relent in their commitment to the electoral process in general, but also to these elections. Um, their constitutional and civic duties um, insist and suggest that they must continue to support this process and not to withdraw from it. Uh, there is no other alternative, despite all the disappointments and frustrations. The only way forward is to remain committed uh, to this electoral process and also the, to the elections that, are, that have been rescheduled. Uh, that is the only way to a better Nigeria. Um, to withdraw is not an option. Sir, my name is Oluwole Musu. I'm representing SMEFA. Aside the economic uh, implication of this and the financial implication that this might have, the negative aspect of this on uh, all stakeholders, we know that there are some people who are built to be uh, active members of this particular electoral process, like the uh, core members of the National Youth Service mm -hmm. Corps. I saw some pictures yesterday of some of them who slept in buses mm -hmm. at different places. Mm -hmm. And looking at the security implication of this, what do we have to say about this? That is one. Secondly, is you made a statement earlier that um, the announcement was made about the cancellation of the election process and uh, no statement of apology was tendered. What does this have to do with the psyche, the thinking of the ordinary Nigerians, especially the youth, who sometimes people will just uh, look at the way people take certain decisions without considering the, the emotions of others. They just take decisions and don't, give, don't care about what happens. Please. Do you want to? Oh, OK. Um, I think it is very unfortunate, and we can afford, that's why we're saying, we can afford to go back uh, to that um, era where things were inappropriately done by um, expected institutions of government. Uh, and for laws, it is about dealing with institutions and dealing with the generality of our country without apportioning blame to either political parties or individuals. We want people to be accountable to not only the mandate of their office, but also the expectation of the people. And for us, that is why we're saying this should be treated dispassionately without politicizing what we can see as almost an international embarrassment uh, to the country, uh, the colossal loss that um, in terms of financial um, consideration, in terms of the integrity of the electoral process, and the same thing in terms of the image of the country must be treated as, a, as an issue. And the body saddled with the responsibility, which is why we're saying it is shocking that we don't even have an apology Chair, from Chair, um, Chair. Um, um, INEC and the INEC chairman. And, and I think it is not too late for the INEC chairman to actually apologize to Nigerians. Uh, I also read about the youth coppers uh, that were not adequately um, taken care of, and uh, some of them in Lagos and in other places. They deserve not only just an apology, they also de deserve um, compensation. compensation for compensation, um, yeah. the actions that were taken on, on, yes. uh, on behalf of the INEC. And so it is important that we also call for an audit of what happened. Basically because we didn't audit what happened in 2011 and the subsequent ones to actually hold people responsible and accountable uh, to both the citizens and even the constitution can also bridge, you know, uh, a repeat of that is about we must make this one the last of this kind of experience in this country by ensuring that people are made to account for what happened uh, resulting in less than 24 hours uh, the scheduling on of election. On election day. Something happened on election Any other question? Okay. 
Many people see this, I mean, what are the other people? It's another act of insurance. Uh, that people just wake up and do whatever they want to do mm. without minding the feelings of fellow human beings. Besides economic, you know, implications and damage the national image and all that, shouldn't we, I mean, who should be held responsible in this kind of situation? And shouldn't some people you know, be paid, you know, pay for this. Yes. He's, he's, asking, he's asking us questions. Yes, I'm done. Who? Who? You. Who is, Who is asking us questions? 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 Who is asking us it has become a trend over time and it hasn't been addressed and I think that is why our colleague here said that uh, we are calling for an audit this time around so that this doesn't uh, uh, continue uh, in our system. Uh, we've noted that um, Nigerians could easily be discouraged and uh, apathy could set in, voter apathy could set in. So in order for that not to happen, we feel as if there needs to be some sort of accountability and some sort of a transparency on the part of the institution that's at the forefront of this, obviously, which is INEC, but obviously it goes beyond INEC as well. So the, 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 the hope is that INEC will be sensitive to this call uh, for an auditing process so that we can know what went wrong, where, and how. Any other questions? They have had enough. <laughs> okay. Do we have comments around the table? Um, Dr. Kabir, there are questions around yeah. security and all that. Do you want to? Just to call on, I would say, IED and INEC to clarify to Nigerians now that the elections have been postponed, um, uh, the arrangement that's um, put in place, you know, the restriction of movement. I'm not aware that any statement has been issued by the IED. Thank you. Uh, Professor Ibo, any comments? No comment, but just to appeal <laughs> to all Nigerians who can, let's maintain the peace. Now, talking about peace, let's ask Pastor Sam. Mm -hmm. Pastor Sam. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, you said that uh, if you want peace, you have to build on the structure of truth and justice. Much more than brain and just attributing everything to God. We also, religious leaders, uh, join our cause to be political actors and national leaders, to do everything possible to ensure peace and not just show that just for peace, but we appeal to the citizens to remain calm because you can't be strategic, you can't achieve anything uh, of value in an atmosphere of chaos. So we should not be pushed where we trade away the Well, um, I like to say this is not a time to trade blames and not the time to politicize the issue. I think this is the time for uh, politicians and political parties and other actors to be strategic. The reality of the situation is that the election has been postponed. Um, there comes a window of opportunity for political parties and those who are contesting to put their acts together, um, brush up on their uh, 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 preparations, and uh, realize that it is only in an atmosphere of peace, of trust, up to a point that election could take place. Um, if the polity is overheated, then it is going to be impossible for us to have 
a free, fair, and credible election, and that will be to the disadvantage of Nigerians, and particularly of those who are aspiring to leaders. Um, if the citizens are incited against the government, against the system, and they lose uh, 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 um, trust in the electoral umpire, um, then that is a very bad thing. Uh, it forbodes something very bad for our country. We must not lose sight. It is just a disappointment. It is the beginning of the struggle. Nigerians must be more determined to make a statement, to make their decision very, very firm, very, very sound, and very, very convincing. Uh, they could vote their, their conscience and their preferred candidates. Thank you. Sister Mary? OK. Well, like you said, um, it's a moment of truth for all of us that we've had um, cases of election being postponed. This won't be the first time, but this is definitely the closest we've gotten where it happened right on the election day. Just a few hours to voting, and this happened. I know that um, a lot of us were totally scandalized. Um, a lot of citizens would have been a lot of despair. But um, we must forge ahead. We must uh, look, keep hope alive, because this is the only country we have. And it has to take the collaborative effort of every one of us. We have to give INEC the desired support they need. Um, INEC, on their own, would have to win back the trust that Nigerians repose on them. Um, from the beginning, they've told us they were ready. Three months to election, we are ready. Two months to election, we are very ready. A month to election, we are very ready. Two weeks to election, we are more than ready. We yesterday. believe them. Yesterday, yesterday, they said they were, they were ready. ready. Yeah, yeah. Then, then ready. four, five hours to election, we had, wait a minute. There's something. We are not so ready. So they need to win back our trust. This is not a very palatable thing. All of us are not very happy about it. But then it does not lead us to a place where we cannot hope in our country. We will continue to hope in our country. Then INEC must remember the place of systems and processes. It is very important that once one aspect of the chain caves in, it affects every other thing. And that takes us to the economics of this postponement. It is in monetary terms. Businesses, monies were lost. Parents have moved their children out of school. Are we going to have a double midterms? In, oh, no, it's going to be triple midterm yeah. exercise across this country. It is huge, huge cost. It's a, at a huge cost of Naira to us. And let's have that in mind in our planning and communicate effective communication absolutely very important and highly critical to the success of the coming election. So INEC needs to pay serious attention to that and know that if they can communicate things effectively, Nigerians cannot buy into whatever we're doing. Thank you. Bob. Well, um, ladies and gentlemen, as you know, um, Democracy has been embraced as the best option for us. We indeed don't have alternative. We cannot get democracy on a platter of gold. We have to sacrifice for democracy to be consolidated. And this is part of the sacrifice we are going through. Um, rather than pointing accusing fingers, we acknowledge the weaknesses in the system, but at the same time, we call on those who are responsible for the election to strategize and win our confidence, as the previous speaker has said. Uh, there has to be a predictable and positive link between the process and the outcome of the process. I think it was on the basis of that that the INEC decided uh, to postpone the election for one week to enable them to do a better job. We think that what is worth doing is worth doing well, and we call on Nigerians to give every support necessary to the electoral body to conduct a free, 
fair and transparent election that would be credible to the eyes of everybody. And I call on you, the civil society and especially the media, that you are a critical stakeholder in this endeavor. Whatever you convey to the general public counts a lot. Let us try to build consensus on understanding our weaknesses and finding ways by which we can overcome the challenges and build a greater Nigeria. Nigeria. We all have a stake in it, and I urge us all to be peaceful, and let us call on all our supporters to be peaceful and give the necessary cooperation and uh, encouragement to the electoral body to deliver on its mandate. We thank you very much for coming. Thank you. Um, for us here at the Election Observation Platform, is the struggle continues. Yeah. Thank you, and God bless you. Thank you.